At the end of a day of shooting, what's left for a bunch of hobbits when the costumes and the furry feet come off? Well, as you're about to see, a group of actors who started as strangers four years ago remain wherever they go and whatever they wear, a true fellowship of the ring. Never above you, never below you, always beside you. Cheers, guys. As you look back over, what is this, four years of filming? Yeah, it'll be four years. Brightest moments for you, happiest moments as a, as a group. For me, being surrounded by beautiful women and sleeping on a huge pile of cash. I've seen you. Ah, you can take the Hobbit out of the Shire. Finally out of costume, that's Elijah Wood, the Frodo to the world. You've left out one of the chief characters. Sean Astin, he's Sam. Potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd. Mary and Pippin. Mushrooms! Plus, Andy Serkis is here too, minus his computerized alter ego, Gollum, who he compares to a junkie. So the whole way I've kind of approached Gollum is that he's like a heroin addict. He's right. a junkie and the ring is his fix. Mm -hmm. And he's so physically and mentally he's tortured in the same way that an, an addict would be. Sure. So that it's not kind of an, a, an abstract kind of concept. It's something that can really, you can play as an mm. actor. Sean Astin, on the other hand, had a more weighty problem. His character, Samwise, had to be chubby. Lovely big golden chips with a nice piece of fried fish. <clears throat> Being so fat was hard. How much did you have to gain? Like 35, 40 pounds. Mm. I don't know if I had to gain that much, but I ultimately did gain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it started out where we would do sword fighting or you know rock climbing or whatever we were doing, and I could do it. I could jump over anything, and sort of by the end, it was like, well, dude, I can't really bend down and touch my toes. So can we stage this slightly differently so I can, you know. A few moments around this table, and you know these friendships will last long beyond the final cut. Great. On this job, it's defined my social group. You know. It's, it's created a new social group for me. Yep. I mean, I've gained lifelong friends, and my life path has changed as a result of it. More than just entertainment, the cast is aware that these movies, where fantastical hobbits join elves and kings to battle a great evil, have struck a deep chord with the public. What is it about now, you think, that the message of the movie seems to strike home to so, so many people? The story is so strong that anyone's going to respond to it, you know? And I think we, we as people all want to find the, the person that we most believe in, the person that will save the day, as being the everyday guy. Release him or I'll cut your throat. Yeah. Because that's us. Right. You know, we feel like, well, maybe I could do that. Maybe right. I could be thrown up. It's yeah. the little people. It's the normal folk that you empathize with. Yeah. We all understand that the greatest heroes are not Hollywood heroes who you know are going to be the heroes because they look like the heroes. I mean, it's within all of us, that basic idea of good versus evil in the most simplest of ways and on the most grand of scales. And I think that's why the book has remained such a popular book over time. I mean, I think the 60s, obviously, it was being mirrored against Vietnam and all of those kind of things, so right. the hippies really took it to heart. Yes, we did. <laughs> what are we holding on to, Sam? There's some good in this world, Mr. Fertile, and it's worth fighting for. Perhaps one of the secrets of the success of these films is that they debuted in a world reeling from the September 11th attacks, a world where monsters truly lurk, and where, naively or not, the battle between good and evil seems to be waged daily. That battle seems so far away on this distant island, and yet the actors believe New Zealand's remoteness is part of the very soul of these movements. The fact that not only was it just simply New Zealand, but the fact that we were all out of our element here lent itself to the film. If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. I don't think that the atmosphere that we were able to create on this, that family atmosphere, that closeness, would have been accomplished anywhere else. If we'd been in Los Angeles, life would have been just continuing as normal. Now right. everyone had to create We had their... to stop our lives for this. This became our lives, you know? Action. Marooned on an island nation 11 hours from Hollywood, for the stars, months of their lives on set. Take after take as Jackson sought perfection. Ah, good. Ah. For some, the physical work of battle and rehearsal for battle. 2,350 shooting days in all. And then there's the promotion, the interviews. 
These people have lived in Middle Earth so long that it's as real to them as your backyard is to you. You'd think after all of this, they'd want to leave Middle Earth behind. Not so. I'm in Frodo's uh, spare room in Bag End. That's right. Are you leaving, darling? But now they're leaving New Zealand, and it's over. So I kind of lost touch with, with any other reality. And everyone used to feel the same way. Everyone was saying towards the end, how do you leave Middle Earth? You know, how do you make that journey back? It's so sad, because I love everyone, and saying goodbye was so painful. Okay, here we go. Well, you don't have to leave Middle Earth just yet. When we come back, the premieres, and a scene from the final movie, The Return of the King. And now, four years in the making, the journey away from the royalty of Middle Earth to the land where only box office is king. And the scramble for Oscars and screaming fans takes the place of Golden Rings. Though Hollywood certainly knows a thing or two about hosting a movie premiere, in the case of Lord of the Rings, last night's opening in Los Angeles had nothing on Monday's extravaganza back in New Zealand. Hometown hero Peter Jackson played Grand Marshal as a crowd of 400,000 surged to see their heroes one last time. December is summer in New Zealand, so sunglasses on hobbits aren't so much a star turn as a necessity. Also on hand, Sir Ian McKellen, Viggo Mortensen, Orlando Bloom, and Liv Tyler. As for Liv Tyler, blow a kiss and make a wish. For remember, her character Arwen has made a difficult choice. She has given up eternal life as an elf princess to follow Aragorn, the human king, her true love. Here now is an exclusive glimpse at one of the final movie's most poignant moments, the princess and her father. Your hands are cool. Life of the Eldar is leaving you. This was my choice. Mother, whether by your will or not, there is no ship now. <laughs> 